morning, ladies and gentlemen. Just a little pile of wood to burn. So, bad news. Played some cement yesterday and we've had a frost. I didn't think we'd get one, but we've had one. Alright, girls. Look at this little girl here. The white one keeps pecking the feathers off of her neck. Nice to see they're enjoying the uh, hay bales. Anyway, let's see how this has gone on. Oh, it's not ready to be uh, to be laid on, but we might have escaped the worst of the frost. Yeah, it's only just a surface frost. It's not even bothered it over here. Look. Yeah, it's still a bit tactile, as you'd imagine. I used old cement as well just to just to get rid of it. The powder was in an airtight container but it was at least a couple of years old. Alright young lady. Right, anyway, we'll leave that to go off another day or two. And we'll go back down to work and finish off the shed. We're gonna have to find somewhere for this lot to live as well. Obviously it's not gonna be there's not gonna be any room up here for it. So we might have to flat pack it, put it in storage. Listening to some wonderful James O'Brien on LBC while I'm at work. You should do the same. It stops you being a weirdo. 18 mil ply. Little political rant there. <laughs> uh, base. There we go. Gives you an idea of the size of the brewery, doesn't it? 12 by 8. Base of 10 by 8, actually. See, we cut this section down. Uh, I'm going to drop a couple of boards on top and then we'll start putting the walls up and then the final thing will be to cut the roof sheets. I'm just going to blast on with it today because I'd like to start to see some paint going on through the walls. I'm a little bit tongue tied this morning, I think I need a coffee. Yeah, I need to see some paint going onto the walls today so it's dry, hopefully, for tomorrow. Oh, first floorboard down. But I think it's time for a coffee and a two-day-old sausage roll break. Why not? Nothing like uh, staying off the carbs. So as you can see, the main frame of the shed is all up. The floor's up, the walls are up, even the roof rafters are up. And then what I've been doing is cutting all the roof sheet sections uh, individually and putting them in place. Then we're tying them to the rafters and also a couple of extra bars that we've put in to take the top section of the roof then that means we can actually put the roofing felt on uh, before we transport this back home. So the idea being, this section here would contain the ring beam and this roof rafter and all these roof sheets are screwed on and we'll also put the roofing felt on there as well. And then I'll take this roof section off and then we'll felt this top section. Now this doesn't come away with the rafters. In fact there are two more bars on the inside which screw to the rafters. So when we lift this roof sheet off it comes off in two sections to make it a bit easier to transport. So what we're going to do is we'll uh, felt all of it. We'll leave a few overlaps where the sections join together and on those overlaps we'll be able to put some roofing felt adhesive once we install the roof back at home. That means that we don't have to mess around trying to climb onto a completed shed roof and potentially fall through it. It is 12mm ply, I think it's strong enough for me to climb on top and I weigh over 100 kilograms, or 110 as Stuart would have, you know, 105. But uh, doing it this way as well makes it easy enough for me to get around the back of the building which of course is the reason we're building this as a modular 
shed and also it'll fit into a standard transit van. So I'm going to put these final two roof sheets on this side then we can set about putting the felt on and also the edging bars where we're going to be nailing the felt onto. And then we'll start on the other side of the roof. It's provided I've got some felt nails. Don't know if I have. This is how I roll on a Friday night, folks. I'm past seven. Is it half past seven? Sorry, quarter to seven. Friday night and I'm still here building a freaking shed. So, as you can see, we've got some felt on the roof, some sidings on there, just to prevent, what do you want to call them, fascias, just to prevent the felt from blowing off. I haven't put the top section on yet, but you'll see up there that the top section is just going to be draped over the edge and then we're going to run 75mm onto the next piece of felt and we'll be using adhesive and maybe nails, probably nails because we can go straight into this look. Mind you I don't want nails on this section because they'll poke through onto my heed. And then this top apex bit will have a 300mm wide section that goes over the top of the ridge as well. This is what it looks like on the inside, it's really rather spacious. I could easily brew in here, you know, I could get the pilot kit in here. Might struggle on headspace, but it's more than big enough for what we need. There are the other roof sections. So I've got both sides of the roof done. Just got to do the top bits. I think I might do them at home, I'm not sure yet. Probably do them at home, then the ends won't get damaged if they're a bit flappy on the edge. But I think it looks bloody gorgeous. I'm very pleased with it, I really am. So if I take a step back, oh there are the doors as well, to go on the front. We've just got everything off while we paint it. But that looks so much better than the shed that I've taken down. And when it's got all of its trims on as well, so all these exposed edges, I'm going to trim up with uh, some little pieces of wood that I've got. And we'll paint those bits white, you know, and it'll look like a Dutch barn. Because it is a Dutch barn style shed, effectively. But well, there we go, I may as well go home today. I've really enjoyed doing this. It's been quite an uh, interesting build. I keep, wanna tell, keep wanting to tell you more bits about it. Like These are the little sections I've got to hold the raft, uh, the roof sections in place. And we just pop a couple of screws out on here and they lift straight out so we can just take the roof off. I've built it, as I keep saying, to be modular. So when we move house, this can come with us, all the sheets will come up off the floor, back section into two halves, apex off, sides into two, front into three sections, roof into four sections, and cart her away. Yeah, really, I'm looking forward to getting it in the garden. So this and the chicken pen, a little bit of paint on some of the brickwork that I've made, It'll be like a nice little small holding, but just for chickens and border collies and me and Gemma and the kids. I think if we have to suffer this freaking coronavirus lockdown any longer, I'm going to need to be able to enjoy this summer in my own company, if not the company of people in our pub. So, uh, having a nice environment at home is going to help quite a bit, I think. Uh, I really want to get this stuff fired up, you know. I've just heard on the radio, actually, this afternoon, listening to LBC. Uh, they finally come clean. I'd already had a heads up. I think Martin might have mentioned something to me about May, maybe May the 31st, bank holiday, for when they think they might open pubs and restaurants. And everybody's been thinking maybe we'll come out of the lockdown in March and be able to go to the pub. That ain't going to happen. You know, if we come out of the lockdown in March or April, we're going to be going straight into the tier system again. And we are not going to be open. The hospitality industry isn't going to be open. And of course, they've said that if this runs into May, 
which they think it's going to do now or they've actually come clean and announced it's going to do now then lots of publicans and people in hospitality have already stated that they won't be reopening their businesses which is extremely unfortunate and of course when we open ours we've had to borrow £50,000 on a bounce back loan to try and save the business if the business fails the Chancellor of the Exchequer does not get that 50000 back and he does not get all the VAT that we pay to him throughout the year from selling our own products so it's a double-edged sword if they don't help us to keep us alive then they're not going to have any revenue to pay for the measures they've taken during this pandemic and one of the things that really kind of gets my goat and I mean really gets my goat is the amount of money wasted and we're gonna have to pay for that you know our VAT is going to go up, our PAYE is going to go up, our national insurance is going to go up. You mark my words, everything's going to go up. And yeah, fair enough, it is to pay for the work that's been done to help us through the pandemic, such as people in the NHS, bringing more staff into that uh, industry, for instance paying the furlough payments of everybody's wages, paying a minuscule amount of support in grants to businesses who have been forced to close down. But don't be fooled. That is a fraction, a fraction of the amount of money that has been wasted and given to chums by the Tory party who are in government, nonetheless and it has gone to their friends on systems that just aren't fit for purpose markably the Serco, not NHS the Serco test and trace system the reason why the vaccine rollout is going extremely well at the moment is because the NHS are running it it's not a private firm and I don't want to hear any bullshit about well Labour wouldn't have done any better they fucking would because I'm telling you now you'd have to work harder than they are now to do any worse <laughs> I'm not gonna buy it I could do better with one arm tied behind my back than what this shower of shit are doing oh I did turn into a political rant anyway on a Friday didn't it so I'm turning into you Martin <laughs> I've been watching too many of your videos mate so all we want to do is get back to work and be told the truth that's all we want just the truth but you're never going to get the truth from a conservative. Yeah, a lot of politicians are going to lie to you, but particularly conservative politicians. And I think we'll end on that note. I'm not saying you can trust them all, but I'm certainly saying you can't trust them fuckers. Certainly saying that. So enjoy your weekend. I'm going to bugger off home. I'm going to get stuck into a load of beer. Probably take myself a little gift pack home. I know it says attic on there, but I've packed her up, look, with little beauties of my own. Oh yes, and I do have some uh, attic at home as well. So enjoy, folks. If you're a Tory, fucking change your mind. But don't be offended. I'm just, it, the truth sometimes hurts people, doesn't it? And it is the truth. They are doing a shit job. Uh, but there we go. That is what it is. I won't lie to you folks. I'm going to go home and get pissed. That's the truth. We'll see you on the next one.